Hello and welcome to this second lecture of our series on performance based design of structures. In the previous lecture we discussed the major differences between linear and nonlinear seismic response of a structure. Uh, in this lecture we will explore some other aspects of nonlinear seismic response of inelastic structures and its relationship with the response of elastic structures. We will also explore uh, whether the response of an elastic structure can be obtained uh, using uh, the response of the elastic structure having uh, similar or equivalent uh, properties. If such a relationship is possible, then the response of the elastic structure can be obtained quite easily because the response of elastic structure is already available to us in the form of response spectrum. So let us start with the equation of motion. You are all familiar with the equation of motion of a linear elastic system mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to minus mxg double dot. Here xg double dot represents the acceleration due to ground motion and x double dot represents the acceleration of the structure with respect to the ground. So you must be clear that x is representing the relative displacement. It is not absolute displacement. It is relative displacement and k into x gives the uh, force due to strain or force due to stiffness directly which is proportional to the relative displacement. Similarly, mx double dot gives us the inertia force and cx dot gives the damping force. Now, this, can, this equation can be written in another form uh, by dividing the whole equation by mass m and substituting c as 2m xi omega. So if we do that, then we will get the equation number 2, x double dot plus 2 xi omega x dot plus omega square x k y m becomes omega square x equal to minus x g double dot. Now let's see what change will occur if our structure or single degree freedom system is nonlinear. Uh, what do we mean by nonlinear? Uh, by nonlinear we mean that the force displacement relationship as shown on the right side of these equations is nonlinear. And uh, the simplest form of nonlinear, which we discussed earlier also, is uh, bilinear curve. In bilinear curve, the initial line is representing the initial stiffness K0, and after yield, the stiffness reduces significantly. It may become zero, it may be positive, or it may be negative. Now, this curve shows that the stiffness of the structure is changing. Before yield, it is K0 and after that it goes on changing, it depends upon the displacement. And uh, one metric to represent uh, this stiffness is the secant stiffness and secant stiffness is nothing but the slope of the line joining the origin with the point, any point on the load displacement curve. So if you join these two points, the slope of that equation will give you the secant stiffness. And you can see that the secant stiffness depends on the displacement. As the displacement is increasing, the slope of the line joining this point and the origin uh, goes on reducing or in other words, the stiffness goes on reducing. Now, if I have to represent this relationship in, the, in my equation of motion, I have to introduce a factor fx divided by m. What is this fx? fx is the actual load displacement curve, which may have any shape, any general shape. So if I rewrite the equation for inelastic nonlinear system, then the equation becomes x double dot plus 2 xi omega 0 x dot plus fx y m equal to minus 
x g double dot and uh, here omega naught is given as square root of k naught by m uh, why omega naught because the stiffness of the inelastic structure is changing with displacement so the effective frequency or effective period will also change uh, with the displacement so here we are using or uh, we have written the equation in terms of the initial stiffness or initial frequency omega naught so uh, k naught by m gives us the square of the initial frequency and the actual frequency at any instant of time of a structure will be governed by the displacement at that moment if the displacement is less than uh, the yield displacement then the frequency will remain same as the initial frequency but after yielding the frequency will go on reducing or the period will go on increasing so if we uh, want to obtain the response of uh, the inelastic structure we have to solve this equation uh, 3 and in this equation 3 uh, fx is a function so a direct solution of this will depend on the uh, uh, the function fx the form of the function fx now we can write down an equivalent equation to this in terms of uh, so called equivalent parameters and that is x equivalent double dot plus 2 xi equivalent x equivalent dot plus omega square equivalent equal to minus x g double dot now here we have used x equivalent so this x equivalent is the displacement of the equivalent elastic system so a system which is giving us the same displacement as the inelastic system that we call uh, displacement of the elastic uh, sorry displacement of the equivalent system and xi equivalent is representing the damping ratio of the equivalent system so this damping ratio has to take into account the initial or viscous or material damping and also the hysteretic damping as the energy dissipation in case of an elastic structure takes place not only due to uh, viscous damping or material damping it also takes place due to hysteretic damping so the xi equivalent will include effect of both the damping as well as uh, hysteresis and omega square equivalent is the period of the equivalent structure there are many ways in which uh, the period of the equivalent structure is, is considered we will discuss about that in the next slides as we discussed in the previous slide the response of an elastic system can be obtained from an equivalent elastic system and that equivalent elastic system should have the equivalent period and equivalent damping now which period is the equivalent period as we discussed that uh, the period of an inelastic structure goes on changing it is equal to the initial period before yielding and after that it elongates and the elongation depends upon the displacement or the ductility demand and as the ductility demand increases the period goes on elongating uh, one method to obtain or one protocol to consider this equivalent period is the secant period that the period corresponding to the secant stiffness and as we discussed the secant stiffness is the slope of the line joining origin with the corresponding point on the uh, load displacement curve so if we join that and take a slope of that that we are representing by k sec and k sec by m will give us a square of the uh, equivalent frequency or frequency of the equivalent elastic system uh, is a small uh, rearrangement and substitution will give us the ratio of the second period uh, to period uh, of the initial uh, or the initial period uh, in the elastic range uh, for this you have to obtain the slope of uh, the secant line 
which is fu divided by xu and uh, that you can divide by the period t and uh, a little substitution here which is given shown in the slide you will obtain that the ratio of these two period is a square root mu over 1 minus alpha plus alpha mu in case of an elastoplastic system elastoplastic system represents a simple form of uh, nonlinear system where the slope of the load displacement curve after yield is zero if you look in the figure in the previous slide it means that alpha is equal to zero and when you substitute alpha is equal to zero then the relationship between uh, the secant period and the initial period can be simplified and this relationship becomes t sec by t equal to square root mu or the secant period is initial period times square root of mu that means the uh, secant period elongates or the effective period elongates with ductility in proportion to square root of the ductility ratio this phenomena is general in uh, general terms is called uh, period elongation or period shift uh, the equivalent damping xi equivalent which we have used in the previous slide as i said there also it is uh, representing both the viscous damping or the material damping plus hysteretic damping and uh, hysteretic damping can be obtained using the relationship between the energy dissipated per cycle and uh, the maximum strain energy store so that is equal to 1 upon 4 pi ed by es not where ed is the energy dissipated in one cycle and es not is the maximum strain energy which is stored in the structure at the maximum or the peak displacement this will be explained in more detail in the next slide this slide explains the concept of equivalent damping uh, as discussed in the previous slide the equivalent damping depends on the ratio ed by es not where ed is the energy dissipated per cycle if we assume a bilinear uh, load displacement behavior then the hysteretic loop will be given by a parallelogram so ed is nothing but representing the total area of this parallelogram whereas es not which is representing the area the energy stored uh, uh, at the peak displacement which will be given by the uh, area under uh, the secant line so here this triangular portion uh, that is representing es not and using the two you can calculate xi equivalent and if you do a little bit of substitution uh, as shown here in these equations you can obtain xi equivalent as xi not plus 2 over pi 1 minus 1 over mu uh, this relationship has been obtained in the ideal case where the hysteretic loop is uh, parallelogram but you remember from our discussion earlier that uh, the real hysteretic loop is not parallelogram it has stiffness degradation and due to stiffness degradation the pinching occurs and because of the pinching the area of the hysteretic loop or the energy dissipated per cycle ed reduces so taking that into account a general relationship can be written as xi equivalent equal to xi not plus c mu minus 1 over mu pi you can see in the previous equation just above this uh, the two over pi 1 minus mu minus 1 here the constant value is uh, the value of the constant c is 2 but in uh, other cases the value of c will be less than 2 we will see that later for different types of structures with this background let us see how to estimate performance point of a structure uh, what do we mean by performance point by performance point we mean that what will be the response of the structure during a given earthquake and this performance point is generally expressed in terms of a displacement 
so what displacement our inelastic structure is uh, going to uh, respond so that displacement we have to obtain there are a number of uh, methods to obtain performance point uh, these can be broadly classified into two categories the first category is equivalent linearization or uh, the capacity spectrum method in this method we utilize the capacity curve of uh, the structure which we have obtained earlier to obtain its response to a given earthquake the other uh, category consists of the displacement coefficient methods in displacement coefficient method the response of an elastic structure is obtained uh, directly from the response of the elastic structure using some corrections some correction factors or coefficients so if we know the response of the corresponding elastic system which is having the same period and same initial damping as uh, the inelastic structure we can obtain its uh, response using some correction factors uh, for example you know that in case of long period structures equal displacement principle is valid and then the response of uh, uh, the inelastic structure is same as the response of the elastic structure then there is one offshoot of uh, equivalent linearization method where uh, in place of uh, damping we use uh, yield or elastic uh, response spectrum uh, which we discussed earlier then uh, these two methods the last two methods these are not really uh, methods of performance point evaluation but uh, more uh, the methods of uh, estimating the capacity curve so we know that uh, when the structure yields when we are gradually pushing it in uh, pushover analysis uh, the structure yields gradually and when it is yielding its uh, stiffness changes and when its stiffness is changing its uh, dynamic characteristics are also changing and uh, the mode shape which we have used initially to distribute the load along the height of the structure for pushover does not remain valid as the analysis proceeds so what we can do we can go on changing the mode shape or the distribution of the load along the height according to the mode shape obtained at different levels of displacement so this we call adaptive pushover analysis where the distribution of uh, lateral force along the height of the structure is changed corresponding to the mode shape at different levels of displacement then we discussed that uh, the limitation of the pushover analysis is that this is a single mode method which considers only the fundamental mode so it has been tried that uh, if we consider several modes and perform pushover analysis and superpose them then uh, what will be the reliability of this analysis now we know that uh, modal multimodal method is a superposition method and uh, superposition is valid only in case of uh, elastic or linear structures in case of non linear systems this uh, superposition is not exactly valid and that's the reason that uh, this method uh, has not become very popular because it's not very reliable it's not exactly valid uh, we will talk uh, about the top 3 methods in more detail in the subsequent slides once we have estimated the uh, equivalent damping we have to obtain the reduction in the demand that is the factor by which the response spectrum is going to be reduced usually the response spectrum uh, which is given in code or which we use in our design is for 5% damping and uh, this equivalent damping is going to be more than 5% so this will result in a reduction in the response spectrum and that reduction factor r xi can be given can be obtained as given by this equation 0.1 over 0.05 plus xi equivalent please uh, note that this 0.05 
in this expression is not uh, the initial damping that is all included in xi equivalent so uh, this 0 0.05 will be added twice and you can see if uh, the structure is elastic uh, means the hysteretic uh, damping is zero then xi equivalent will be 0 0.05 and in that case uh, this expression will become one that means the response uh, this uh, reduction factor the due to damping in case of elastic structure uh, which is having 5% damping will be equal to 1 and uh, in case of an inelastic structure where the hysteretic damping also comes uh, in addition to um, the uh, initial uh, viscous damping of 5% there this response reduction factor is going to be less than 1. So now you know two ways of uh, incorporating uh, inelastic energy dissipation in response spectrum. Uh, the first method which is shown by the left curve is based on what we call inelastic or constant ductility or yield response spectrum. Uh, there the response spectra for different ductility ratios can be obtained we discussed it earlier using an iterative procedure uh, by keeping the ductility demand constant adjusting the strength of the structures in such a way that the ductility demand remains constant and then we calculate the yield uh, acceleration corresponding to that strength and that we plot that's why this is also called uh, yield response spectrum the other way of uh, considering inelastic energy dissipation is through damping. So we calculate the hysteretic damping and uh, the reduction factors uh, which we can use to uh, modify the 5% damped uh, response spectrum and uh, that is given by the figure on the right hand side. To be able to read uh, the response of a multi-story building or a multi-degree freedom system directly from the response spectrum we have to represent this by an equivalent single degree freedom system in case of a multi-story building the equivalent single degree freedom system uh, can be obtained in terms of equivalent mass m e and an equivalent height h e and the stiffness is given by uh, this equivalent bilinear curve uh, shown on the right hand side uh, this curve i have taken directly from the book by Priestley on direct displacement based design and the notation here is slightly different than what we used in our previous slides the r here is uh, same as alpha which we used earlier and ki is same as k naught the initial stiffness and ke is uh, the equivalent stiffness or the secant stiffness which we used in the previous notation uh, once the single degree freedom system equivalent to the multi-story building is obtained, the response can be read directly from the response spectrum. And it is to be duly converted to the roof displacement and you know the relationship between roof displacement and uh, spectral displacement which we will be exploring further in the subsequent slides. This slide uh, shows uh, response spectra corresponding to different damping uh, ranging from 5% to 30%. I can use this set of response spectra directly to obtain the uh, displacement response of an inelastic system. I only need to know its uh, equivalent period and uh, the ductility demand. So if I know the equivalent period and ductility demand, the ductility demand is to be converted into equivalent damping using the expressions which we discussed in the previous slides. And uh, I have to use the curve corresponding to that value of damping. And using that curve, that response spectrum, I can read the displacement or rather spectral displacement directly corresponding to the equivalent period. And then this uh, the spectral displacement that is the displacement of uh, equivalent single degree freedom system needs to be converted into the roof displacement. To obtain the performance point we have to compare demand with capacity 
you know the capacity of a structure is given by its capacity curve which is nothing but a plot between the base shear and the roof displacement when the structure is pushed monotonically in a pushover analysis and you can see that the coordinates here are the base shear and the roof displacement and this is to be compared with uh, the demand which is given in terms of response spectrum and the response spectrum has the coordinates s a versus t so spectral acceleration and t now since these two curves are in different coordinates we cannot compare them directly and uh, what we have to do we have to represent the capacity curve of the building by the response of an equivalent uh, single degree freedom system which we also call capacity spectrum so we have to convert the capacity curve to capacity spectrum and uh, for this purpose we have to uh, map the base shear into spectral acceleration so at any given point if the base shear is vi we can obtain the corresponding value of spectral acceleration sai by dividing the base shear by the uh, seismic weight in the first mode or fundamental mode alpha 1 into w alpha 1 you are familiar this is modal mass participation factor or modal mass coefficient for the fundamental mode and in the same way i have to convert uh, the roof displacement into spectral displacement uh, by dividing it by uh, a multiplication of uh, participation factor for the fundamental mode and uh, the uh, mode shape coefficient at roof level in the fundamental mode pf1 into phi1 roof and uh, this pf1 into phi1 roof is giving us the conversion factor for uh, uh, converting roof displacement to spectral displacement using these two conversion we can uh, change the capacity curve which is in terms of base shear and uh, roof displacement into the spectral or uh, the capacity spectrum which is in terms of uh, uh, sa and st this slide shows how the uh, demand spectrum conventional demand spectrum which is in terms of sa versus t is uh, represented in terms of sa versus st or the so called adrs format this adrs format stands for acceleration displacement response spectrum which is in terms of sa and st so uh, we have to convert sa versus t into sa versus sd for this we have to select any period t not or ti and we can read uh, the corresponding value of sai and using the relationship sd is equal to sa over omega square uh, we can convert this sai into sdi so corresponding to each period we can obtain sdi and then if we replace ti by sdi we will get a similar shape of the curve but the uh, x axis is going to be sdi now one more thing you can observe here that a constant period line uh, which is given as uh, vertical in the, our uh, conventional response spectrum now becomes an inclined line passing from the origin so you can see that t not line how it looks like it looks like a sloping line passing from the same corner of acceleration control range and velocity control range and in the same manner the ti line uh, which was vertical is now represented by another uh, uh, inclined line and uh, that inclined line is intersecting our uh, uh, adrs at the same value of sa once both capacity curve and the demand spectrum are represented in the same adrs format spectral acceleration versus spectral displacement format as shown in this slide we can compare them so you can see here the capacity curve which was in terms of base shear versus roof displacement has now been converted into equivalent sa and sd 
and uh, the demand curve, the typical design response spectrum, which was in terms of SA and T, that has also been represented in terms of SA and SD. And now we can uh, start comparing them. The, but there is a still uh, one problem here, uh, and that is that the uh, response spectrum is for a given damping, usually 5% damping. We can obtain for other values of damping by uh, using uh, some reduction factors. But even a reduced, even when it is reduced uh, for a damping, it is it is for one value of damping. On the other hand, if we see the capacity spectrum uh, as the displacement increases, the size of the hysteretic loop goes on increasing, and the damping goes on changing. So the damping uh, on different points on the uh, capacity spectrum is not same and uh, we have to find out uh, an intersection point of the demand and capacity in such a way that those should correspond to the same value of damping. This can be done iteratively and what we do first we assume a point on the capacity spectrum and then calculate the ductility corresponding to that. Knowing that ductility, we can use directly the yield spectrum or the constant ductility spectrum or we can use, we can convert this ductility first into a damping and then use uh, a reduction factor for that equivalent damping and then use the reduced response spectrum. And uh, if it uh, intersects at the same point at which or which we have assumed in the beginning of our iterations, then the solution is achieved. Otherwise, I have to modify uh, the initial point chosen on the uh, capacity spectrum and repeat the procedure till I get a point which satisfies demand, which satisfies capacity and also has the same value of damping for both demand as well as capacity. This point we call performance point and this point is representing the response of the structure or the equivalent single degree freedom system uh, under the given earthquake which is represented by the 5% demand uh, spectrum as shown in the uh, slide. This is representing the peak displacement which uh, the equivalent single degree freedom system will undergo and we can use it to obtain the displacement uh, at the roof of the building by using the same relationship which we have used earlier by for converting uh, the capacity curve to capacity spectrum. Once this performance point or the displacement is uh, obtained, we can check it on our capacity curve whether uh, this corresponds to a satisfactory performance or not. Uh, we have to keep uh, a record of all the plastic hinges which have formed and uh, the amount of plastic rotation uh, which those are undergoing and we have to identify uh, different performance level, immediate occupancy, life safety and collapse prevention on this curve uh, given by these uh, different yellow dots and we have to see that what performance has been, performance level has been exceeded and uh, which uh, performance point uh, which performance is still towards the right of this performance point. So the performance of the structure can be defined by the location of this performance point or by the point immediately towards right of this uh, performance point. That point or performance level of that point will give us the performance level of the structure. The second approach to obtain the performance point of uh, inelastic structures is what we call displacement modification method. Uh, this is based upon the relationship between uh, the responses of elastic and inelastic structures having the same period and same initial damping. Here the roof displacement delta T is given as uh, three constants C0, C1, C2 into spectral acceleration SA into TE square over 4 pi square G. 
please note here t square is not uh, the equivalent period but this is initial period uh, again uh, because i have taken it from ac 41 2006 i am keeping the notation same as in ac 41 so read this te as ti initial period which we discussed earlier so here you see a difference that this displacement modification method is based upon initial period whereas the uh, method equivalent linearization method which we discussed in the previous slides that is based upon t equivalent both ways uh, it can be used so here the coefficient c naught uh, this is a modification factor which relates uh, the spectral displacement of an equivalent single degree freedom system with the roof displacement of the actual building that is a multi degree freedom system and you can guess what this c naught is the relationship between spectral displacement and the roof displacement this is nothing but pf1 into phi1 roof where pf1 is the uh, mode participation factor in the fundamental mode and phi1 roof is the uh, uh, mode shape coefficient at roof level in the fundamental mode now this coefficient c1 this relates the response of the inelastic system to that of the elastic system having same period and uh, the relationship you are familiar uh, to some extent uh, in you remember uh, equal displacement principle and equal displacement principle says that the uh, response of uh, or the displacement of uh, inelastic system is same as that of the corresponding elastic system in that case c1 is equal to 1 and that you can see from the values uh, shown in this slide also that for periods greater than one second which are considered as long period structures the c1 is equal to one but uh, for periods short uh, in the um, uh, uh, constant uh, acceleration range uh, the value of c1 may be much higher and uh, you have seen earlier that it goes on increasing with reducing period and there is a capping on the value of c1 corresponding to 0.2 second and uh, c1 need not to be taken greater than what is obtained at 0 0.27 uh, 0.2 second so whatever is the value at 0 0.2 second if the period of the structure is lower than 0 0.2 second then the value corresponding to 0 0.2 second will be considered for those structures as seen in the previous slide for uh, periods greater than one second c1 is unity but uh, for uh, periods shorter than one second it is given by this expression one plus mu strength minus one over a t e square uh, this mu strength here is same as uh, r y which we discussed earlier so this is nothing but the ratio of uh, the uh, uh, spectral acceleration of the uh, elastic structure to the yield uh, spectral acceleration and te is uh, same as ti which we have used earlier also and a is a coefficient which depends upon the site class and uh, site class a and b this uh, factor a is equal to 130 for site class c it is 90 and d e and f this factor is 60 uh, it shows that the response of a short period structure is also dependent on the site and uh, why uh, the site period should come into picture the site class should come into picture you know the flexible site will have uh, a characteristic site period uh, which is on longer site and uh, that will mean that uh, the short period will be even shorter in that case and the increase in the uh, response spect response of uh, short period structure will be even more as i told in the previous slide this mu strength is same as uh, ry and this is the ratio of uh, the elastic uh, spectral acceleration or the spectral acceleration which uh, the elastic structure having the same period 
will experience divided by the yield spectral acceleration and yield spectral acceleration uh, we can obtain by dividing vy by cm into w the cm is nothing but alpha 1 which we have uh, discussed earlier and cm into w gives you the seismic weight participating in the fundamental mode so this sa over vy w actually becomes sa elastic over sa y and uh, that is nothing but the yield strength uh, reduction factor ry which we discussed in one of the previous slides then uh, the coefficient c2 uh, that is also given in terms of uh, the ductility demand uh, mu strength or ry using uh, this expression this coefficient c2 for which the expression was given in the previous slide actually takes into account the effect of uh, different types of degradations that is uh, the pinched hysteretic uh, loop the cyclic degradation of stiffness and strength deterioration uh, and the effect these parameters have on the maximum uh, displacement response it has been observed that uh, for uh, structures having longer periods that is periods greater than 7 second uh, these effects can be neglected and there the value of c2 is taken as unity but for structures having period less than 0.7 seconds the value of c2 is also to be computed using uh, the expression given on the previous slide and once c0 c1 and c2 are known we can calculate uh, the roof displacement using that relationship c0 into c1 into c2 into sa into t square over 4 pi square into g so using this relationship we can get the uh, roof displacement of a multi-story building directly from the design response spectrum that is the response spectrum corresponding to uh, five percent damping which is available in all the design codes thank you